Hey guys, James here today and welcome back to another Sims 4 video. Today we are building another tiny home. This is now going to be a tier 3 tiny home. We have done two micro homes, which is tier 1 under 32 tiles. We have done two small, no, tiny homes, which are tier 2 under 64 tiles. And today we're doing our first small home, which is 100 tiles or less. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for this. I wanted to do something different, something unique. Uh, well, maybe not unique. I feel like people have probably done this before, but something a bit different than just a small house, just a regular looking house. I wanted to have fun with it. So I thought we'd go to Strangerville and I'd build a train because I thought that'd be cool living in a couple of train carriages. So one train carriage is obviously too small. That's only 45 tiles. So we're going to have two of them uh, back to back and they're going to be joined together. And I'm using the uh, debug items in the game, which you can unlock with a cheat. Uh, and using those as sort of references. And then I'm obviously keeping the front carriage, which is like the engine. And then I put one on the back just to make it look a bit longer. I mean, it's a really short train. Uh, it's only four carriages. But the idea of this whole build was that it's maybe an abandoned train at an abandoned train station here in Strangerville. So it's nothing, there's nothing that's really uh, crazy or like not supposed to be this giant train station because at the end of the day, this is supposed to be a tiny home. Uh, so the idea is that someone, you know, happened upon this abandoned train at this this train station and they're like, you know what, I'm going to turn this into my house. This is where we're going to live. And so that's what I'm doing. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm using the other carriage that's already in the game as like a reference because I like the look of it and I thought it was a good place to start and would go with that. I was hoping that we could get a four tile wide carriage, but if, if we did four tiles, it looked way too big. So we have a three tile wide carriage that I don't know how long it is, but three tiles wide and then that's that. I was trying to see if I could uh, get a roof on top of this by lowering down the floor above, but the game would not have it. So instead of having a little roof on top like the other one, we just have like a sort of sticking out half wall kind of thing, uh, which is fine. I mean, I think I think this looks really, really good uh, for considering like it's out of walls and all that, and it's all completely usable. Uh, and as all my other tiny builds, I have completely play tested this. So it does work. Everything works that you see here. I think we even see a little bit of play testing in this time lapse. And then at the end, we'll jump into the game. We'll check it out real time. We'll get our sim in there as well. And we'll have a play around with it and everything that you need should be there. Now, in terms of what this house actually is going to contain, it's nothing too crazy. And I kept it pretty like, uh, I guess, part of the theme, like it's on theme. The interior is more traditional styled. I try to make it kind of look like an actual train inside, obviously with some exceptions, like the bathrooms are way bigger than you would probably find. And I don't think they particularly match the style that well, but I couldn't really do much else with it. And then the other thing is I wanted to do more like regular looking seating, uh, I guess, cabins, you know, like, you know, if you think to the, in the Harry Potter movies where they go on the Hogwarts Express and it's got these really nice little uh, cabins next to each other with booths in it. I wanted to have like an interior layout like that, but it didn't really make sense. You'll see I start to do it in the second carriage and then I quickly like change part of it to make it fit better. It's possible to do that. It's definitely possible. But then I'm like, we're wasting so many tiles on just hallways. So it's, it's almost just not worth it. So, <laughs> so I was like, nah, forget that. I'll change that. Uh, and I figured I would do some tracks underneath the train uh, just to make it look a bit. I mean, I think I honestly think it looks fine just being on the desert and like, I don't think you, you're not really looking that close at it, but I was like, you know what? I might as well build some tracks. We're doing the whole train thing. So let's do that. I'm trying to find some, what are you, like sleepers? Is that what they're called? I, I feel like I'm making that up. Train, train track sleeper. Is that what it was called? I think it is called that. Railroad tie, rail, railway sleeper is a rectangular support for the rails in railroad tracks. Oh my God, I'm so smart. I actually know something. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm just putting basically the wooden beams across the tracks because it, it looks better. So we're using like that sort of slightly taller fence that kind of looks like it's a rail and then just doing all these debug uh, wooden beams. I really wish, I love, I love all this debug stuff. And if anyone has used these hidden items uh, in the game, you'll know this exact frustration where you can't, you can't hold down shift when you place them and you cannot eye drop them. Uh, and it's so, it's so annoying because you place something down and you just have to keep dragging it out. And then the same goes with, um, you also can't really search for stuff, which I, I understand that one because obviously all these debug items, the way they're used in the game, they're just used in the world. And like, so the stuff we're using now that you don't normally see in the catalog is stuff you'll, if you look around in the world, you'll see as decoration. So I understand why they're not named and tagged and all that stuff, but I mean, if I don't know how if it would be difficult, but if they could just like allow you to eye drop this stuff to copy and paste it, that'd be great. Also, while we're at it, 
Uh, the other thing that is really frustrating is um, with move objects, if you use that cheat and then you like, actually no, it's not even move objects. It's just, you don't even need a cheat to scale an item. When you scale an item, that's not even a cheat. You can just do that without entering anything. But when you eye drop that item, it just loses the scale and goes back to default. And on that same note, when you raise an item up or down with move objects, that's where that is a thing, it resets every time you eye drop it or if you pick it up and move it. It's like, oh, actually, no, it doesn't do, not if you pick it up and move it. But yeah, if you sort of uh, copy and paste it, it doesn't keep it. It's like, man, I wish it kept the height. I wish it kept the scale. And it would just make everything a lot easier when it comes to doing these like really unusual builds because when you're using move objects that much and debug items, uh, it's just, it gets tedious. Anyway. But we're, we're doing good stuff right now. We got the main train carriages here. Before I went too much further, I wanted to figure out what the rest of the lot was going to be. And I figured, well, I mean, an abandoned train, it could it could just be in the middle of nowhere on a track. But I felt because the track is obviously finishing on the edge of this lot, it, it kind of just doesn't go anywhere. So I figured maybe it was part of an old station, then they removed the rest of the tracks in the area or something. I don't know. So I figured I'd build this old timey looking train station. Uh, now, I would have... I would have obviously raised it up and had it on a platform so it looked like a train station and wasn't flat on the ground. But because we're doing a tiny home, we can only use 100 tiles. And as soon as I use foundation, it will go boom and we'll use all of our tiles up immediately. Uh, so it did have to be on ground level, which is not like entirely uncommon. I mean, if you saw something like this in real life, it would probably at least be like a step up because like the stones would be laid like on something or the concrete would be poured on top of something. You know, it wouldn't be, they wouldn't dig down and then play, I don't know. Anyway, so it's a little, that's a little bit on, you know, that's not great, but that's kind of the best I could do. So and then in that case, I tried to dress up everything else. So we use these columns, we got some spandrels. I did a nice uh, roof over the platform to keep it nice and covered. So when you're waiting there for your train in the past, it'll be fine. <laughs> you won't get wet, I guess, even though this train is not moving anymore. I don't know. I, I, I had a lot of fun building this. Now, we did build a little train station thing here as well. I don't use this to put any like stuff for the house inside of because I mean, I know you. there's a lot of there's a lot and a lot of ways you can sort of uh, cheat around the uh, tile limit. And this is one of them. Uh, you well, well, not right now. So you basically don't place the wall. You pick up the wall, and move it in. Then it doesn't count as a room. So then it doesn't count the tiles. And you can totally do that and then use it. And you can also use like roofs and stuff. Uh, but I mean, in the spirit of the sort of whole tiny home uh, challenge, because I mean, all these builds that I'm doing are supposed to be tiny homes. Uh, maybe at one point we'll do a cheaty micro home. So a 32 tile home, but we'll just make it massive because that'll be fun. Uh, but for now, like I'm just going through all of them and doing them as we should. This is purely a decoration building. There's nothing really in it. I put a few benches and then that's it. I'm just using it for decoration really at the end of the day, because I mean, the rest of the lot is just empty. So it, we really just needed something to go there. So I figured that was a good idea. And that's what we did. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, just a couple of doors. I did want to get some dormers on the top, but it means I would have to angle the roof a lot steeper. So it didn't really work. So instead I put a chimney, I was like, maybe in the winter months in this desert, they want a chimney. I don't know. Some deserts get really cold in the winter. Okay. Don't grill me about it. Now I put this little um, fence down the bottom. So that, that little fence from Get Famous is actually a fence that stops Sims crossing it. I didn't test whether or not Sims could just walk through uh, these these debug fences. Because first of all, I really like these because I think they look like a really nice big wooden fence and I wanted to use them. So I've got them up there, but I wasn't sure if Sims could walk through them. And at this point, I didn't have a Sim to test a lot. So instead, I just put a fence underneath those items and then put the fence there as well. So there's definitely no way they'll go through it. So there shouldn't be any problem with that. And then the other side of the train track, I was like, maybe I'll just do a fence over there too. That one looked cool as barbed wire. It doesn't really make a huge amount of sense. It's just there for looks. And we got like a tiny water tower, some other tower thing to the right. I don't know. Just seems to look good. It's just um, some debug stuff from uh, Strangerville. Now for the rest of this, I figured it's quite near the road. So I would imagine that at some point in the past that this place had like a place you could drive in here. Uh, so you drive in here at the front of the station like that. And basically I'm just trying to make it look like it was years ago that this was last used. And it's all sort of cracking up now. It's faded away. Desert sand has covered it back up. Plants are reclaiming it, you know, it's cracked away. So that's kind of what I was going for out the front. Because the lot isn't against the road anyway, there's no way we could actually connect it if we wanted it to look clean. So that's why I was like, all right, I'll just make it look a little bit dirty. And then that should be fine. And uh, and just make it look like it's been reclaimed. It's quite old, you know. I, I think it turned out really well in the end, especially because there's some debug fences in here that we're using from Island Living. But these are great because they all look like they're falling apart. It's all falling over, so it looks like super old. 
It's no longer, you know, kept in, like, in good nick or anything like that. I was kind of just having fun going through all these items. Apparently there's a broken plane over there too. Because this, well, this lot in Strangerville is where the, uh, the old Penelope is. As you can see, the title of our lot, the top left. So that's where like the plane crash build is. So this, I was like, you know what, we'll do a little plane there as a little homage to the uh, the original lot. Uh, I just thought these vines looked good here, but then I also kind of thought about how it doesn't really make sense that there's a lot of green vines there. They're literally on top of desert sand. I mean, there's other plants around the place, but not that much, so I don't know. Maybe whoever lives here in the train now as a small home, they, they, they're cultivating a beautiful vine, and that's what they're doing. That's their thing. Uh, and then we just do a bunch of chairs and benches. Well, not chairs. We do a bunch of benches around the train station. So there's plenty of places to wait. Lots of bins, which is good because that means we do have a bin. There is a bin on this lot, so you can chuck out your stuff. And there's also a bin inside too. So have no fear. It's all good. And then just a few more cracks that I put on the floor. Some more dead vines over this side, which I guess I probably should have used on both sides. And then a couple of those signs hanging out. I wish we had um, little clocks that were hanging out like that because that would be perfect for an old train station. And then I did like a blank billboard because maybe at some point they used to have like train times or something on there. Or I don't know, just local news or something. And then this is what I was saying about this little interior place. It's basically just like a few benches and then that's it. And then I do like a board, I think like a blackboard thing. I don't know. What do I put there? Uh, maybe nothing actually. Because <laughs> I was trying to find something that made sense. There really wasn't anything that really makes sense to go there. So I think I ended up just doing nothing. All right, so this is where we're figuring out the layout of the trains. We're starting off with the bedroom train first. So at the end of this one, there is a big double bedroom. I say big, it's like three by something, three by five or six. Uh, but yeah, that's the double bedroom. And then we have a second bedroom that has two beds and it has twin beds, which actually work, which is pretty cool. And then we get the bathroom at the end. I would have liked to have added a, uh, like a ensuite bathroom for the main bedroom. That would have been nice, but that would have just taken away so much space. So I just did like a shared bathroom for the bedrooms. And that's how we worked with that. And just doing little lights around the trains. The first lights you can see I put in there that I felt like they were way too bright. Oh, also that door that comes with Strangerville, I thought that was like the perfect train door. It looks so good. It's got like that sort of little latch on it and everything. Uh, and then we're going, like I said, going for a sort of old timey looking train. Nice wood paneling on the interior, some red carpets. And then I guess these side rooms are supposed to be like the little cabins that we've got. So this is our bathroom space here. Two by three, loads of room. Has a, a bathtub in it, by the way. A shower tub combo. It's pretty luxurious for a train. Like, like I said, I, I feel like we're, we're taking a lot of liberties here. Now, surprisingly, I was going to put the bed against the wall, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to test these because I think we can get all these to fit and have them all work. So she can walk between them there, but she couldn't get in. Now she can actually sleep in both those twin beds and she can sleep on both sides of that double bed, which I thought was really cool. So it meant we didn't have to do any, any messy kind of stuff or shoving the bed in a wall and trying to get the Sims to sleep on the correct side. It's fully functional, not to worry. Uh, it actually all works really, really nicely, which I was, I was pretty happy about. Obviously you can see the double bed kind of overlaps the door there a little bit, but you could imagine that you'd only open the door the other way in reality, but in this game it doesn't work that way, so. Or like maybe they'd do like sliding doors or something, it would probably work better. Then we got a small little dresser in here, and then I thought I'd do a vanity, because I thought a vanity would be nice. Uh, you know, I don't know, it seemed fancy, so we just did that, uh, and then there's a little door to the balcony at the back. Uh, yeah, it's, they're really nothing that over the top, uh, and that's because I kind of looked up some actual like train bedrooms and there really wasn't much going on in there. I mean, how much could you really have? Uh, I mean, and I didn't really want to go overboard with decorating either, which, oh, I guess, well, I guess that doesn't really make sense because what I was thinking, I was like, well, if the train was moving, you wouldn't want too much, like uh, you wouldn't want a delicate vase on, on a table or anything. But then I just remembered we sort of, the whole idea of this was it's like, sort of like an abandoned train. So it wouldn't be moving. Mm. I guess I could have done a few more little trinkets. Anyway, I didn't do trinkets because I was like, it's a train. Uh, so I guess you can add some in if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this twin bedroom, surprisingly, all of it works. Like I got that little end table in the middle there. It would, that would, that would be awful. Honestly, having that table in the middle because it's overlapping the bed a little bit. I can imagine hitting that table all the time and it would really hurt too. But for the sake of like completing, like, look at that. I can't believe that works. I was like, I was quite happy with that. For the sake of like completing the room, it was no problem. And then for the bathroom, uh, so originally, and I do edit this later on, but you don't see it, uh, I sort of lay out the bathroom and the, the bathtub and shower at the moment isn't actually functional. But all it requires is I slide over the sink a little bit later, so then it works. But yeah, at the end of the video, we'll jump into the gameplay and you'll be able to see us testing it all out there and how it all works. I think it works 
pretty well. Oh yeah, so if you want to download this, it is linked down below in the description, or you can search The Sim Supply on the gallery. The Sim Supply is still alive and well on the gallery, just not on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, Sim Supply has died. Um, yeah, so this train is where I wanted to do more traditional looking cabins, um, but it didn't really work because... Well, okay, so the idea was we'd have a bathroom one, we'd have a kitchen one, we'd have an office one, and a living room one. And I realized the living room one really wasn't going to have any space, so I decided to, well, number one, expand the kitchen car, which is the one that I just made a bit bigger, and then the car at the back, or like, I'm saying car, it's not the whole thing. And then um, the room at the back, I just opened that up and made it a living room. I actually had a little bit too much space for the kitchen, and I didn't know what to do with it, so I just made the kitchen a bit bigger. And you guys are always telling me in every single one of these tiny builds, it's like, why don't you use a mini fridge? They're fully functional. And I have noticed those comments. I just never got around to actually doing it. And I didn't realize at first that a mini fridge was fully functional. Like I thought you could only do quick meals out of it. But anyways, yeah, you guys told me that a while ago. So I have seen it since then, but I just haven't put it into practice. And I thought a mini fridge here was the perfect opportunity. So that kitchen right there is like completely functional. Um, in three tiles, like, well, actually a little less than three tiles, because you see I sort of squished it in a bit. Uh, yeah, so we got the mini fridge, we got a microwave, we got a dishwasher, we got a stove. So you can use everything you need right there. And I was like, that's pretty good. And then I realized, I was like, I have this extra tile for the kitchen. I was like, I guess I could have made the kitchen a little bit smaller, made the living room bigger, but I felt like I didn't want to do that, because it didn't need to be done like that. And anyway, so I made the, I, I make some adjustments to the kitchen a little bit. So this room here at the back is like the living room or the lounge room. Now, I didn't put a TV in here because, like I said, I was sort of decorating it like an early or like an old school train. So we just have a nice little bookcase there. And I do a little old school end table and I do like the gramophone. I was like, oh, I really wanted to use that one from Get Famous, but it was a bit too big. So I put a little gramophone there. I was like, yeah, that seems timely. Uh, <laughs> and then I had that fun rug down there too. So that's our little living area, which I thought was pretty good. I got a nice bunch of pictures on the wall. And then the kitchen, I, I think I expanded it with an island counter. I was seeing what else I could do, and you saw originally I was going to do the laundry there, and then I thought, ah, that's kind of lame, let's not do laundry right there. So I did laundry in the other area. And then, yeah, it kind of just ends up being more counter space, but I, I mean, I guess that leaves room over if you guys want to change something or add something in there later, uh, you could do that. So that is the kitchen and dining area, which ends up with three bar stools. There's like room for four sims to live here, but I mean, there's no, I guess there isn't a four-seater dining table in this place, but... I figured at the same time, and I've mentioned this before, like how how often do your sims all dine together? Like if you, even if you try and do it, half the time they just don't. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we've got this fancy office here with the globe bar. And then I'm just doing some files and some stuff on here. And I do like the little notebook that whoever's there was writing in. Uh, but of course you could replace that with a computer or whatever you need there. And then we just do the little bathroom here at the end. Uh, and that's kind of it. This is just a sink and a sink and a toilet because we already have the shower in the other one So I didn't bother doing that. This one also has the laundry. I do add a hamper in I think I don't think we see it here But when I was testing out of the hamper in to make sure it actually worked, but that is it Let's jump into the game and check it all out. All right So here we are in the uh, train lot. It is nighttime apparently I I guess I might might have started during the day would have been better But you know what I guess you can see I did add these lights in actually after the uh, time lapse as well because I figured we needed some I think this looks so cool. I, I was pretty happy with this. So I guess the idea is, I don't really know where this train is going. I mean, it doesn't really line up anywhere. Maybe it's a really old, I guess it would have to go like here somewhere, really. It was actually gonna be. Anyway, let's let's not look at that. Let's not, let's not question where the train actually goes. But yeah, this is the lot, all is one. I think it looks really, really cool. I'm so happy with this. I, I love doing these tiny builds because it allows us to do some different things that aren't necessarily a house. I was sort of playing around seeing what would happen, you know, all that kind of stuff. I did actually hide a little fence here as well. That is a fence. So it means our sim won't walk out this way. So they'll sort of always go through the front of the station, which I kind of like the idea of that. Um, and that's our front door there, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so I actually kind of like that. Um, I don't know if they can get around the back. Oh, she's walking between the train. All right, so she's using the toilet. Uh, so we'll let her do that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll just go through everything here so you can see it. There's a sink. Let's say take a shower. There you go. That all works. Then we got this little bedroom, we already saw that working. We got the master bedroom at the back, it's got a little coat stand, a couple of little makeup accessories. I don't know, I, I really enjoy this. I think this is super cool. I reckon there's definitely potential to just keep adding carriages as well. If we had a bigger lot, you could just add more. Obviously then it wouldn't be a tiny home anymore, but I think it's, it's a really cool idea to sort of play around with this. Here she is in the living room, little gramophone. I thought that's great. And our kitchen here as well, that is fully functional. 
which I think was at the end of the time lapse. Let's do a single serving of grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. oh, uh oh. Well, I don't know what she did just then, but she was okay. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what she was doing there. Anyway, there we go. And then we got the little office, which is, I guess, kind of useless at the moment because it's something on the desk, but you could easily make that usable. And we got a little laundry in there, which we could do our laundry. Let's go add to washing machine. Okay, don't actually eat the grilled cheese. And, and it, we're, we're testing the lot. Oh, oh. Hello? Uh. Uh, okay, that's not how you do laundry, but I'm not even sure. Wait, does the laundry not work? Uh, oh. I guess it doesn't work. Well, I guess I didn't test that. She apparently just picks it up and puts it there. <laughs> okay. Well, this is already uploaded to the gallery, so I'm not going to be changing that. So I guess you need to move this a little bit. I mean, maybe a better... Sp I just didn't know where to put it, really. Well, without move objects, it does let me put it there. So surely that works, right? Let's see. Live testing. Do laundry. Add to washing machine. Mm, I guess not. Well, uh, we're going to move that. I mean, really, a hamper can be anywhere, so we could just put it we'll put it in the, the office. <laughs> Hello? Hello? All right, well, you know what? Let's, you know what? I'm going to put it in there. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll show you how to... I'm going to show you, give you a tutorial on placing the hamper. It's going to go right there. Then that should work, right? Unless there's something else broken with laundry. I don't know. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I thought you couldn't do it again. Yeah, okay, so that, that should be fine now. There you go. And then use the toilet. Yeah. All right. So if you <laughs> if you download this with the hamper there, put it there. <laughs> it works a lot better. <laughs> anyway, that is the train tiny no, train small home, which is a tiny home. It's a tiny home lot style. Uh, so we get the light and low boost, and we also get the feeling fine all the time boost. Only 92 tiles. I did have a few left over. But yeah. If you have any suggestions for the next tiny home, we should do so. The next, we'll do another small home. If you got any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. But thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time and have an awesome day.